Holy slimy tentacles, OGGM. What is this I see before me? Is this the actual cover of Fendelver and below? Are they actually going to do cosmic horror? Is Wizards of the Coast actually going to do the most secretly anticipated storyline since 2014 that they've been hinting at for 10 years? Probably not. What's up, nerds? It's your boy. It is Tuesday. We have some Wizards of the Coast news regarding Big B's and, more importantly, regarding secretly one of the most anticipated products for the past 10 years, Fendelver. And below, the cosmic horror conclusion of the past 2014 to 2023 storyline that has weaved its way through every single official D&D adventure product, even though it is never mentioned, brought up, or has never been resolved, even when they said they were going to resolve it in Rime of the Frostmaiden, but they've been hinting at it since day one, the mysterious black obelisks that have haunted multiple D&D adventures are finally going to be resolved in the super duper expansion of the, well, the best Wizards of the Coast product for 5e Wizards of the Coast made, and the most popular and the most highly regarded, the Mize of Fandelver. It's, it's kind of pathetic that, with, with the exception of my self-loving Tomb of Annihilation, pretty much pound for pound, Minds of Fandelver, the companion adventure that came with the first box set, is considered the best thing Wizards of the Coast did for 5e. It's like Minds of Fandelver, Storm King's Thunder, a couple others. I don't know. I don't think anybody else rates Tomb of Annihilation as high as I do. Most people think Tomb of Annihilation is a joke. I love Tomb of Annihilation. I, you know, it's it's just a setting I absolutely love. I'd use it for other games if I ran a, uh, you know, whatever. So we have some news on the Shattered Obelisk. So the first off, this is a ridiculous title. So the full title is Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. And it is the sequel continuation of the, the story started in the Lost Mine. Why are you beeping me? Oh, okay. Something just got delivered to my door. Nobody cares. One beep is enough. Five is too much. So this is the cover. Well, this isn't the cover you're going to get. This is the cover you're, you're going to get if you paid the extra money for the uh, deluxe. Yeah. And in it, in it we, we talk about, they, they talk about the larger mystery that was hinted at in Minds of Fendelver, of course, the obelisk that has been found in at least, well, I mean, it's in Tomb of Annihilation. It's in Princes of the Apocalypse. It's in Rime of the Frost Maiden. It's mentioned. So, for the, for, so since 2014 till today, they have been hinting at these black obelisks. They're, they show up in several articles, several adventures, several pictures. They're, they're, they were never explained. We were told they would be explained in Rime of the Frostmaiden. They, they weren't finally now here at the end of the 2014 to 2023 arc, the 10-year as 2024 D&D &D 50th anniversary opens up. They're going to resolve... <laughs> the story of the uh, the obelisks and the the number one theory that the obelisks are connected to our boy Vecna and of course 2024 being the year of Vecna again as Vecna's this Vecna storyline that they've been hinting at is going to be how we transition from 2023 5e to 2024 5.5e or 6e so the creators claim it's going to contain body horror. It's going to contain cosmic horror. It's going to contain new monsters. It's going to contain nightmarish images like Tentacle Cow. I love you, Tentacle Cow. Uh, but it's also going to be kid safe. It's going to be kid safe. At least the first couple chapters are kid safe. But then the last chapter switches over to full on Cthulhu S body horror. Or as Cthulhu S body horror, a Wizards of the Coast project could sound. Now on paper, especially after the 10 year build, my, this sounds awesome. Especially if you've never had a chance to grab Minds of Fendelver, they're going to completely represent Minds of Fendelver all new and updated with all new 5e stats, which will be totally pointless in January. Um and then they're going to continue the story and it's going to get spoopy it's gonna get body horror it's gonna get cosmically nightmarish. They even say you need to have a session zero for this one. And that the last chapter, it gets into true horror. Now, yeah, after the buildup and after reading this, I'm like, I'm excited about this. But then I remembered 
This is Wizards of the Coast. And this is the exact same level of excitement we had going into Journeys to the Radiant Citadel, where everybody was like, oh my freaking God, this is a great idea. All you have to do is take Babylon 5 and Deep Space 9 and reskin it as D&D. Bam, work done. And then we got Tales from the Radiant Citadel and we were like, what, 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 what is this piece of crap? This is awful. Spelljammer is awful. So on paper, this sounds amazing, especially since they're telling us straight out, this is not kid safe. But then in the very next part of the article, down here, they talk about how the first couple levels of the book are kid safe. And it doesn't really get awful to the last one. Okay, so, but then, again, it then also says, we are providing guidance to tone down the horror if the horror is too much for you. And if you need to take something out or not. Um, and it says, well, you need this, you need this dial down because the last chapter is not friendly, family friendly as written. It would need to be entrusted for a family campaign. Another option, we could just run the first three chapter for kids and save the rest for the adults. It is definitely a read before you run campaign, said Harmon. A session zero is also recommended. So we can expect a at least one chapter of safety tools and how to run a cosmic horror adventure using 5e safety. Uh, DMs are also given options on how to handle this. If the group has already played through Minds of Fendelva, players can continue their original characters and get a refresher from the start with new material or could start over with new characters in the reworked original adventure. There's a distinct endpoint to the old material and starting point for the new material that DMs allow to handle it however they want. Uh, it's fairly relatively family friendly, but it's also horror. But then he also wants to focus on the fact that it is all about this charming town, the charming. Because remember, we got to have D and comfy D and D, the charming town of Fendelver, and giving you what, reasons to save it because Fendelver is a clo a cozy town that players want to save. And here's an example of one of the NPCs you can meet in Fendelver. This Indiana Jones looking gnome. They even say, yes, this gnome archaeologist is a ripoff of Indiana Jones. Uh, the artists and creators refer to themselves as Team Weird. They have an enthusiasm for horror and strange and worldly characters, and especially comedy horror. But, you know, it's and they say this is the strangest, most horrific game that we've ever done. But again, they also then talk about safety tools. Now look at these, look at these things. Look at this. This is awesome. I don't know what this is, but it's, it's horrific. It's nightmarish. But the, this thing, it's just, it's just a glob of eyes. I, I mean, it's just horrible. And each eye is like, that eye's happy, that eye's sad. You know, each eye showing a different emotion. I guess this is a take on the gibbering mouther. You know, the creatures made of eyes, creatures made of uh, steel. One creature that steals flesh. These all sound like adult themes and then of course we've got tentacle cow what's not to love about tentacle cow so it's going to contain more than 20 new creatures including psionic magic stop trying to make psionics and dnd a thing mutations it's going to have consumable consumable items so i guess in addition to po potions uh, magic muff muffins you know super duper pills yes Consumable items. That's what we want to see. Wizards of the Coast telling it it's okay to take drugs. A poster map of found Delvin and the dungeons. Awesome. And then just tentacle horror. Pages and pages of family friendly tentacle horror. Now, on its own, Minds of Found Delver is a pretty family friendly, relatively easy going starter adventure. It's a toned down version of Keep on the Border Lounge set around keeping Fandelvern safe from the inhabitants in the mine slash caves. And it's obvious that they're going to include uh, at least one to at least five to 37,000 pages on safety tools before they get to the actual campaign, which apparently starts out relatively horror free, just a regurgitation continuation of the original Mines of Fandelver, but then continues the story Finally, hopefully explaining the Black Obelisk, the countdown that has been going for 10 years, 
And then this should lead us to the end of the year. And then 2024, D&D &D 6E starts with the Vecna storyline. I guess they're redoing Die, Vecna, Die in 5E because they have hinted at since the very first obelisk that the mastermind behind everything that has happened in all these adventures, Vecna. Even though there's no canon in D&D &D, and, you know, you can run each adventure or you in any way you want, but there has been this sort of hinted at, sometimes subtly, sometimes overtly themed, um, suggestion that throughout from you know minds of Vendelver all the way up to the most latest adventure i'm not talking settings like spelljammer or witchlight i'm talking adventures like rhyme of the frost maiden and tomb of annihilation and storm king's thunder and princes of apocalypses that there has been this underlying connection with these obelisks and they all lead all roads lead to our boy vecna he is the secret mastermind and he is the secret mastermind that is going to jumpstart 2024 D&D with Minds of Foundelver being the last adventure of the year because Planescape is an adventure. It's a con it's a campaign setting. And the Deck of Many Things book is not an adventure. It's just a book of no more random magic items and table. It's a splat book like Tasha. So it's, it's, it's buy or ignore. It's really, you know, it's just more of the same. And then it's got the new Deck of Many Things which is causing so much trouble. So on paper, this is exciting. I would love to see a devastating cosmic horror, worst forgotten realms timeline um, introduced as a way to how you explain the transition from 2023 D&D to 2024 D&D and how you explain the transition from forgotten realms centric to world agnostic. And we're going to use the next you know, 2024 to the 2027 to kind of hint at other worlds and revisit them. But mostly the main storyline is going to be just sort of about world agnostic, multiple adventures, multiple settings, multiple planes, and throughout all of it, Vecna and the cosmic horror of these things. But then again, they are obviously going to have at least one section, if not more, on safety tools and on how to dial down the horror to make it even, you know, more safe than D&D &D horror already is. Or, you know, and then because it sounds great on paper and we know Wizards of the Coast batting average from sounding great on paper to actual product is zero for 40. Um, if we're going to compare this to the last thing, you know, uh, Radiant Citadel, which was just a huge disappointment. The final product will probably be tentacle horror, but safe and cuddly. Oh, those aren't tentacles. They're candy canes. That's not a horrible chaos monster. That's a cupcake. Da -da 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 -da. And turns out Vecna is working at the IHOP because it's Wizards of the Coast, and Wizards of the Coast thinks that what we want. So we can look at this and go, yay, tentacle horror. Cosmic Horror, d d but then in reality we're going to go, yeah, probably the whole book will be more about things like this. And then Mackenzie can come out and say how she canonically created Cosmic Horror for d d because nobody else did it before her. I created d d before anybody else did. I created Cosmic Horror. I, Mackenzie, did. Yeah, we're Team Weird. We're the first people to ever do tentacle horror, body horror for a d d game. Call of Cthulhu, never heard of it. We did it first. Look at yeah. Still, the art looks awesome. I mean, obviously, we're not going to get that art. You'd have to buy the extra special super deluxe book to get the art. Speaking of art, did you hear that the final release of Big B's when it hits the shelves has been cut? It has been cut down in pages. Why? Oh, because these 70 plus pieces of useless art are being investigated and they've had to replace them or completely remove them. So it seems Wizards of the Coast got caught in their own trap and now they're having to put up or shut up. So when the final physical product of Bigby's hits the shelves, it will be less than what they originally said it was going to be because of art and because of controversy. And apparently a couple of the heat feats are a little questionable and people are already going, mm, I don't know about that feat. It feels a little, um, 
eh, uncomfortable. So yeah. Now, if you have the digital version that's been available since whenever, you're fine, right? It's not like Wizards of the Coast can go into the digital version and change it without telling you. Oh, wait. Yeah, they can. They literally can. You literally give them, gave them the permission. Isn't it great that you can rent space on D&D Beyond for 30 bucks a month so you can buy a product that isn't physical that you can only access as long as you continue to pay the 30 bunk rental fee and that Wizards of the Coast can go into that product and change it at any time they want without telling you. So even if you're like, oh, I've already got the digital version. I don't have to worry about them changing it. No, they're going to change it. They can literally go in and change it and not tell you. So those questionable feats, which I don't know what they are yet because the rumors don't say, they could be gone and the artwork's going to be gone. Now, if you have the physical product, well, you're going to get the regurgitated, re-edited, safe product. And if somehow you're that people who claim they had it even before it was on the shelves, like the people who claim they had Disney Lorcana even before it was on the shelves due to magic, um... Yeah, well, you're going to be subtly hinted that you should buy the new correct one. Oh, I know you've already paid for the physical ones and you somehow got it, even though it's not on the shelves yet. But that's the no-no version, so you need to rebuy the new one. Just like D&D 3 and 3.5. We never told you you had to buy 3.5. We just suggested if you didn't, you were a horrible person. What do you think about Disney? What do you think about Wizards of the Coast Cosmic Horror? Are they going to stay true to their word? Or are they going to falter like they've done so many times before? I think 90% of us are like, yeah, it's going to end up being a piece of crap and I'm not going to buy it. But, you know, I'll download the art for free. Sure. Tentacle cow sounds like a meme, like keyboard cat. Yeah, let's make tentacle cow a thing. Tentacle cow. Da -da -da -da, tentacle cow. He's a cow. He's got tentacles. He's tentacle cow. That's it for this update on the Wizards of the Coast nonsense of the week. If you appreciate it, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me hit 2,000 subs, and I'll talk to you all later. Warning, this video contains tentacles and might tr trigger you.